Hello, Gobbler fans, and welcome to the Aquarium Gobbler Coaches Show. The Gobbler Coaches Show is presented by Alpha Life Nutrition, specializing in meal replacement shakes, energy teas. Located at 115 North of Esplanade, or give them a call at 361-935-1793. Coach, congratulations uh, on the first win of the district start uh, against Giddings. They uh, came yep. out with a nice score early, yep. uh, and then we were able to kind of shut them down the rest of the time. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, you know, I think our kids came out focused uh, and ready to go. And, uh, you know, we wanted to start off district 1-0. and 0, And so it was important that we came out of the gate with some enthusiasm. We hadn't played at home in a while either. So it was nice getting the chance to play back um, here, at, here, here in Cuero. And so I think the kids really enjoyed that and liked that. And so... You know, they they ran a little screen on us and, and, and got one down the sideline on us. Uh, but, you know, other than that, I thought our defense, you know, held their own and make, made great adjustments in the second half to really kind of keep them, keep, them, keep them corralled up. And then the offense, you know, um, Gibby had a really good game. Mason was, you know, putting the ball where it needed to be to allow him to, to, to uh, you know, uh, be, be a playmaker. But really, I mean, you look at, you know, our O-line did a really good job. You know, we rushed for over 100 yards, uh, and, and Sean Dillon had over 100 by himself. And so, you know, just an overall good team effort uh, all the way around. You, you got a kid like Braden um, Hernandez who kind of just who just comes out of yeah. nowhere, you know. And, and I mean, he, he's, he, we, he's got talent. We know he's got an opportunity to play. And so, you know, huge, huge special teams play. Um, but then he can play some running back stuff. We're moving some guys around here and there and putting them in different spots so so teams can't, you know, really key on one guy. Um, and they got to try to find him around the field where he's going to be. And so, you know, that, that just opens up a lot of opportunities. But those two guys, you know, took advantage of an opportunity that was given to them and, and did a really good job. Yeah, I was going to mention Braden. He, he came out to play, yeah. and, and he was playing receiver, when, and he caught a touchdown, right? Yeah, well, well I, we had him in the backfield. No, you ran. We, yeah, we oh, put him in the backfield. Okay. We okay. put him in the backfield. And like I said, you know, we've got, right. we've got a few different guys, you know, in the skill position-wise that Braden was a running back last year on JV, you know, and so – and and as was uh, Sean Dillon played some running back, but then, you know, we, we can put Tony in the backfield. We can put Dayton in the backfield. We can you – know, heck, Gibby, Gibby can get in the backfield if he needs to. So – you know, different ways, different formation wise to put different guys in different different areas and give them some different personnel. I mean, Lucian's even gotten a couple carries, you know, in the yeah. backfield. So um just just great having that that uh you know being able to be having that diversity where where guys can, you know, one handle the offense and be able to play multiple positions, uh, because they've got to know different terminology in different areas and in different places. But Braden's one of those guys that can do it, you know, all over the field. Um, he's a good defensive player too, and so you know, we're figuring some of the guys out, and, and guys are getting different opportunities, and so it's you know the team has been doing really really well right now. Yeah, yeah. they had two ninety total offense and one forty nine. So I'm gonna say that's a little more than half. We'll just say half. Half of it was on three plays. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was. And then yeah, I mean, you know, and that's gonna happen. But every you know, once in a while, it's gonna happen. We missed a couple in, tackles in the third quarter. The craziest stat to me was I, I, what I think in the third quarter in the first half of the fourth quarter they had run thirty four plays yeah. to our five, five and we had scored twice and yeah. they didn't score. Yeah, but yeah. you know, bend but don't break. Exactly. Uh, and and we you know we talked we were we were sitting there as the third quarter was kind of winding down and the offensive guys were like man we only ran four plays you know we only ran four plays right. in the third, third quarter. quarter. Yeah. And so I mean sometimes those things happen and you know but but we didn't give up give up points but you know those are those are. Things that the defense looks at, and it's like, we're, we're, man, there might have been a small missed tackle here, or this and sure. that. And so they'll get it fixed and be ready to go. But when defense is playing so much. Exactly. You know, yeah, 100%. It's, I know it's we're tough. scoring fast, you know, and then there's times where we score with some, you know, pretty quickly. And so they're turned back right back around. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so as long as we get a couple stops here and there that gives us an opportunity and our offense does what it does, then, you know, we've got an opportunity to be ahead of the game. Hey, I was, I'll was i throw this out there just because. The, I don't know if you if you remember, but when we talked in the coaches show last week, I said that years ago in 2013 there were three field goals kicked in that game. We kicked two. two. That, was, <laughs> that, was, that was nice before half. Nice use of the clock. And yeah, give him a shot. And he, I, yeah, 100. So. percent You know, we kind of we we worked on we back him up in practice and kind of see where Sorry. you know what is. And, and, and in practice, his he, he was about forty to forty two yards. Yeah. And so, adrenaline. you know, yeah. a little adrenaline yeah. going, and, and the weather was nice, and and uh, you know, 
Jimmy's doing a good job yeah. of kicking and oh. and learning what football's about. To be honest with you, still, you right. know, and 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 he he never played football before, and so there's a lot that goes into it. And um, but it was it was a good little uh, good little good little boost there, and it, it, it's nice to know that you know hey here, we got kind of this weapon as we kind of go throughout the course of the season. Well, you know, on extra points now, and I know I held when I was in high school. I was the holder, but. It takes three to make that, and y'all have only missed one all year. I'm trying to find a stature, 24 or 25 yeah. with Jimmy kicking. Yeah. But credit, I think Connor's the deep snapper, Connor Kubish, yep. and then Jackson, Jackson Marie Jackson. holds. But if you, you know, I'd say in high school, probably 50% of the extra points that get missed are because of a bad snap, snap yeah. or a bad hold. And, I, you know, I mean. And so you, you got three good guys, all three of them. You know, in the, it, 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 just watching the game, you're like, well, you know, they got a kicker and they kick it, but there's a lot more that goes oh, in. Oh, sure. You, I mean, you got to be able to block. And, you know, sometimes those are hard jobs because those guys are sitting there as, as linemen, and those dudes on the other side of the ball are teed up in a three point stance, and they're going, when the ball snapped, they're coming as fast and hard right. as they can. And you just kind of getting, you know, you just got to kind of yeah, race and take it. Right. You know? Um, and, and so for all that, that that's that all unit, gotta go right. That whole unit, you gotta yeah. have a snap. You gotta have a guy that can get hold it. You gotta put it on the tee. The kicker's gotta be, you know, I mean, the timing's gotta be right. And 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 we've been working working hard on that. And those kids have taken you know more and more pride as the year goes on because that you know the the one point I've seen you know I've seen teams lose a game by one point oh, because sure. of an extra point. point. You know, yeah. it's happened over the years, and that one point's important. Um, and so those guys have done a good job. I'm remiss that I did not. Maybe I can go find it today. But we talked a lot after the game. I think we talked on the radio. Was the 45 the longest field goal in height in Quero's history? Right. And I did ascertain that Joe Campbell's was 45 yards yep. in the state finals against Ennis in 75. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Dr. Frails told me that somebody said uh, Miles Mayer, Judge Mayer's son, Kicked a forty-nine yard one. Oh, did he? Now I don't know. I, I, that yeah. John said he didn't remember that, but I'll, I'll I'll do a little research if I can figure out what year Miles played. I'll go over to the Coral Record yeah. and try to figure See that out. out. Yep. Yep. It, was, it was a long high school kick. Whatever. How are you going to say it? <laughs> There's not many high school kids that make forty-five yard field. No, those are long field goals for kids. Okay, moving forward, Gonzalez, familiar foe. Yeah, we've played them a long time. Um, Coming off a big win for them against Caldwell, yeah. Um, I, I'm you. They're all everyone's ready to play the Gobblers. Yeah, for how sure. we've been preparing for them this week. You know, uh, we they got a lot of weapons. They do. No, they do. They've got some kids that that are very dangerous uh, in the backfield. You know, the the quarterback. Um, he he's young, number twelve, but but he's a really good player. Um, very shifty. Um, he's gonna have to. You know, we're gonna have to tackle really well. Uh, the Gallegos kid, twenty one. He he can. He can. He's good. Um, hard runner. Um, got some speed. They're young in a lot of areas, but they're talent. I remember, I remember playing these guys. That they're freshmen last year um, on the JV. A lot of them were up on the JV, and and they played us really, really hard. Uh, the, heck, I think number one, the Clack kid was actually on varsity as a freshman last year. So you know they've got all their all their good talent. Doesn't really matter what grade you're in on the on the field, and so they've got decent size up front. Uh, you know on the O line, Gonzalez normally does, and so they they do a lot of reading. They do a lot of they try to put you in a uh, in compromised situations on the offensive side where defensively we're gonna have to be very sound with our eyes. It's not it, it's. It reminds you a little bit of a slot T to, to an extent. It's not the slot T, but they're going to read one guy. They're usually going to unblock one guy, and that guy's going to have to be right or wrong, or they're going to try to make him right or wrong. And so um, we're going to have to be very disciplined with our eyes and our reads and make sure that we're going from there. But but they'll drop back and they'll throw it whenever they need to as well. And so offensively, they're dangerous, uh, that's for sure. And then defensively, I think I think they're you know better than they were last year. Um, they're, they're a year older. Um, they do a good job. They run a four three, and they like to have their their middle linebacker, uh, the right kid, like right the twenty two, and he just try to roam and make as many tackles. And so they're they're good in the secondary back there. They're athletic in the secondary, and so you know we're gonna have to play a very very good football team. If, uh, you know um, we we got to be mistake free, and that's and and again you know we talk about us and, and concentrating on us and us getting better every week. If you're doing what you need to do, you know it's not about the opponent. It's about you working on an upward trajectory right now because you're working yourself towards the playoffs. And this is one of those games, you know, us, LaGrange, and Gonzalez are all all one and one in district. 
So it's one separator. You know, you play in a team that's one and zero is not one and one and zero as well. And so you slowly start separating yourself on you know your opportunity to win the district championship. And this is one of those. I think whoever wins this game is going to have the upper hand in the in the, in the track to be in the district champion in the one seed in the playoffs. So. Um, you know, we're going to have to go over there uh, and, and play up. You know, they, they play hard at home. Uh, everybody, you know, gets, loves playing at home. And we haven't played on grass in, heck, uh, you know, a few years, you know. Since yeah, it's been a while. I haven't. You know, I, we, last year I was going to play one grass game. And so, um, you know, it, it's a little bit different. But we got out on the grass practice field a couple times this week and we were able to get a couple practices in over there just to get the footing down. Um but, you know, our kids understand what's at stake, I think. And, and again, you know, us being 30 miles from each other and playing, I don't know, I call it sad, it's almost 80, 100 times. 89th times. Yeah, 89 times. So, I mean, that's a, that's a lot of, you know, a lot of times of playing uh, this type no, of, these sorry. types of games. 90th, 90th. 90th time. I did that last year. 90th, yep. 90th. So, you know, it, like you said, Tonight well, well, no, you know, we know the opponent. Uh, Coach Rivera does a really good job over there. And so – um, he's going to have his guys ready, and we're going to have to have our guys ready. But it's a fun little rivalry, I think, of uh, two towns that are very, very similar in proximity. And so, you know, we're going to have to get over there and play a good game. Just remember a second. This is the game I missed Yeah, this last is his year. second game. This is his second year here. West Virginia last year. Yeah, I, yeah, think, yeah, I think you were. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So this is his second, second year, year. Second year oh. here. Yep. Boy, yep. they are young. They do. They I got think a, I you know. counted 10 sophomores mm-hmm. and two freshmen. Yep. Yep, it's they are. 12, yeah. But a lot of their, you know, a lot, if you look at like their defensive starters, a lot of their defensive starters are upperclassmen. They got a couple younger guys, right. but a lot of them are, are, are upperclassmen. And so um, they're dangerous, you know, like, like, like I said, um, they've, got, they've got young talent that, that's got some speed and some ability, uh, athletic ability. So, the stadium's always loud to me. Is it? Yeah, to me it is. Yeah, yeah so, well, it, there's no track. It's a it's I not, yeah, it's I mean, we're, high school yeah. that I'm. Stadium that I think we play in that doesn't have a track. I've been there for a scrimmage many years ago, uh, probably 2004, 2005. That's the last time I've been, you know, we, we scrimmaged them, but I hadn't been back since. Well, we played them in the JV last year and went over there, but but not a varsity Friday night, right. you know, atmosphere. My dad actually coached one year in Gonzales so, back when I was a kid. Oh, really? So, okay. I've been in their locker room and on their sideline, but not. Uh, probably hadn't changed much. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think the city owns the field. Yeah, it does. It's not the school district. Yep. It's kind of like our baseball yep. stadium. Yep. What's no, the, yeah. I, I, just for grins, when you send your captains out, are y'all flip? They, y'all still flip before We kind of do it. Sometimes, you know, we, we actually get together sometimes. Like, hey, you want to let the kids flip? You want to flip? And, you know, oh, okay. We do a flip before, but then the, but then we, you know, the kids go out there. and. and well, well and if, if you win the flip and you defer, instead of telling them, Whatever, tell tell the ref you want to go downhill. <laughs> it's a little bit sloped. Well, no, if, you, if, you're, if you're on the home side, you look tonight. When you're, if you turn to the coral side and look, yeah, okay, on the north end zone, the the stands yeah. oh, are right. like on the ground. Oh, and really? By the time you get to the <laughs> south end zone, it's probably three and a half, four feet high. Wow, off the ground. So it tells you. Wow, assuming the stands are level. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? It's downhill toward to something's the, not level. Something's not level. It's downhill toward Quero, toward the river. The river is on that side yeah, of town. So. Yeah. Well, that's one of those stadiums too. You know, who knows how long it's actually been there? It's one of those that kind of got. Why well, don't my dad play? Got there. a little history to it. Yeah, you know, it's been there dad. for a been there for a long time. So you know, it was, I, it was there. Yeah, I remember as a kid when my dad was coaching, and they get the old 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 going. Yeah, and, you yeah. know, your old, your old tomahawk chop rolling. Yeah. As a kid, I thought that was you know that was a pretty neat pretty neat deal. So well, it's kind of you know not to get off too much into numbers, but. In the last twenty years, is eighteen to two quarter. Yeah. What's the overall record? I was fifty three to thirty six. Okay. I've never tied them. Oh, well. Which yeah. is unusual. It's unusual. In that, in that, yeah. that many. But it's the second most played. Of course, Yoakum is the most played. For Quero. For Quero. Yeah, yeah for Quero. Yes. And Gonzalez is the second. Yep. And that makes sense. They're yep. our neighbors to the yep. north. Yep. So. Well, good, good, uh, good luck traveling. I know a lot of distraction, turkey fest, oh, yeah, everything going, going on. on so, uh, Good luck, and hopefully we can stay focused, and, and I'm sure you and your coaching staff will do a very good job of that. Um, Sub-Varsity, we had yep. some fresh, um, excuse me, junior high games yep. earlier this week. And then the uh, junior high guys are kind of in their little district, you know, their little kind of district that they call it, but they, they got an opportunity to play Smithville, and every, every team won. And so, you know, they're, they're kind of getting towards their – they're rounding out their last couple games, and then there will be a little bit of seeding. You know, they do that little seeding tournament, mm-hmm. almost like a playoff, you know, a yeah. modified playoff 
or they'll play two games to end the season in kind of a tournament format. Do you get to play four four games? We played we played three. Smithville had one eighth grade and two seventh grade okay. teams. So and all of them won, which which uh, you know um, uh, they, they played well. Um, you know the eighth graders got they were at home and uh, they did a really good oh, job. Yeah. You know they're they're good they're continuing to grow. To grow. That's yep. Good. Yep. Yep. And and then two J- wins last. Night. Yeah, two wins last night. Uh, JV came over here. The, Gonzalez didn't have a JV that, or a freshman team, so um, we were able to play Yorktown. Uh, okay. Picked them up, and the freshman guys got a win against those guys. And then the JV, um, they 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 uh, played Gonzalez's JV and, and handled them. And so uh, you know, right now the JV's you know still sitting with an opportunity to win the district championship. And so and you know, they're seven and zero. They're seven and zero right now. Yep. The ninth graders going forward. I know Caldwell doesn't have a ninth grade team, and I know uh, Smithfield doesn't have a ninth grade team. So we're looking for teams. We're looking for team games for those next couple weeks, weeks. you know, coming up. Lagrange so far right now tells us tells me he has two sub varsity teams. So we're gonna find hopefully find somebody for those ninth grade those ninth grade bunches to be able to play so we don't have to play a combined game. I mean, just talking about that, how lucky are we to have the numbers we do have? Exactly. Yeah, hundred hundred percent. And you know, we talked a little bit about grades last week and you know that that's a bit you know, that sometimes can be a big part of it too, because yeah. you lose some kids. Um, that 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 uh, you know uh, don't get their job done in the classroom, but yeah, I mean you know we we rolled out last not last night, man. You know I was looking, I was like, man, we got a, we got a lot of freshmen. There was a big big group of freshmen out there, and, and we had actually taken a couple of them. Tuckpo freshmen played with the JV last night, and so you know it's yeah we got numbers where we got you know good groups at, at all levels. Where, and, and what I think the most important thing about that is kids are getting to play, you know, kids are playing a lot of downs. And over to the development of a program and a kid, you want them to get action. You yeah. know, you want them to get on the field and play. And so that's, that us not having to combine. And then next thing you know, we got 60 something kids on the J, you know, out on a JV team playing or trying to get them all in on a Thursday night. That's tough. Right. Yeah. You know, and so they're all getting a lot, of, you know, all getting a lot of downs. And so that's that's huge in the development of a player. Well, you know, I would say this too because you don't know. To use myself as an example, who who's the star in the eighth grade? Maybe as big as they're going to be in the eighth 100%. grade, and the kid that's yep, you know, the yep. third team, whatever yep. may grow to be. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Whatever. And if you and if they're not getting reps in a game, it's hard to it's, it's, it's hard, hard to, to go to practice all the time and say, well, mm-hmm. I'm going to hang around and. Yep. If I grow, I'm gonna get my shot when yep. I'm a senior or whatever. You know, so it, it, I, it helps. I've been doing it long enough. I've seen B team. I've seen B team seventh grade running backs become all state running backs their senior year. No, exactly. It yeah. happens because yeah. you don't know how kids are gonna grow. You know, our no, exactly. You know, our DNA is like you know. So you never know. So yeah. Champ, champion speaker yesterday, yeah. Dr. Dyer. Dr. Dyer came in, uh, and and w- which is which is good. Uh, you know he he uh, he he talked he told a good story. Um, you know about his kind of how he grew up, but you know we again we try to bring you know you want to bring guys in that that kind of re- reach the you know and I say pinnacle or the, you know the highest level of, of their you know in their profession. Dr. Dyer has been in education for a while, and being the superintendent, you're running the school. You know, and so that's you know you, you got to have some characteristics and some 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 values in your life, I think, to be able to reach those levels. And so he he told a good story. You know, you talk about practice. He he talked about practice. You know, and he was like, guys, you know, how many of you guys actually like practice? And not one nobody raised their <laughs> hand. And it was like, guys, half the time coaches don't even necessarily like, like practice. It. But he talked about sur- you know surviving or striving. You know, and if you're just in survival mode. You know, That's adversity is going to punch you, and it's going to it's going to hurt. But if you're striving, you're coming to work every day, and you're trying to get better. So you know, we we use that as a in life, but as a team as well. You know, it's like stuff. you know, if we're just trying to survive the season, then practices are going to drag out. And they're not going to be good. And we're not going to be very good. But if you know, we want to reach our goals of what these guys want. You know, you gotta you gotta kind of try to strive to be the best you can be every day. And so, um, really really good speaker. You know some good messages that that I thought. You know I think kids can take life lessons and and with our team uh, to make us better. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know volleyball's still on. Volleyball ball. still rolling, right? You know, still yeah. undefeated in district. Uh, and uh, you know, got Kennedy tonight. I believe here at home. Um, and so. Still getting, we're we're almost wrapping up the end of end of district play, uh, and so we got three left, I think, before we technically get into uh, you know the playoffs. Those things will start kind of taking shape. Um, you know, if we continue to take care of business, it looks you know it's looking like that that Lavernia and us will play for that one seed. 
um, you know, that la- the last district game. We've got a couple just non-district games sprinkled in to add, re- add games, you know. Right. More, more sets, more matches we play. Again, the development and playing as a team and the camaraderie and things like that develop, you know, more and more. So, but we're – Coach Flores is kind of trying to trying to hit them into that, you know, that playoff stride. Uh, we're, you know, we're going to try to make, you know, try to make waves in the playoffs going forward from there. But they're playing really well right now. Um, and so looking forward to another good one tonight. I think from what I've seen, uh, I guess 23 wins by my tally on the sheet. Y'all give me when we do this every week, but which is great. And then, but I think they're ranked now. Uh, yeah, I, I think they're start, like slowly 19th, starting. 19th, 18th, yeah, or something. They're slowly starting to creep up the rankings yeah, a little yeah, bit. Which is yep. not, uh, it's not like that happens every year, pretty much like it does in football. So yeah, yeah. Good no, job yeah. by Coach Flores. Yeah, no, for sure. And I was looking, you know, because I was kind of curious about, you know, what's, I was walking through the trophy cases yesterday in the high school, and, and we, the Quarrels had one, well, I know the one I saw. Um, they had one that went like thirty-one and six on a year or something. Um, golly, now now that I say that, I can't remember the year it was. It was a few. It was a few years back, two thousand, early two thousands, I think. Maybe went to the quarterfinals, maybe in volleyball. So that's the trophies that I saw in the trophy case cases. I think th- I, I could be right. I know when Leona Clay's wife was coached, they went to the third round. Yeah. And when my daughter played their senior year, in the second round, they were like. Needville was like yeah. highly ranked. Yeah. We, and we beat Needville and then we lost to uh, Columbus. Columbus. So they made it three rounds. Yeah. So I don't know the, the team. I had to go. Yeah. I was, like I said, I was walking uh, yeah. to school and just looking at it. Yeah. And I, I saw that it was like 31 and 6. And now the, the, but that the, was the probably year is, 20. The year slipped my mind. 20. Yeah, no. Well, Kelsey Washington uh, went down and played at AM Kingsville. And she was um, – uh, when my daughter was a senior, Kelsey was a junior. But they had a good group that went through in about a two-, three-year window yeah. right there. But, yep. yeah. But, no, they're, 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 yep. they're doing as well as anybody in the history of the schools ever yep. done. Cross country wrapped up this you know this week, uh, and so you know Coach Rocha was pleased. We, we didn't get anybody out, but he, he was very pleased with the effort and, and uh, you know the commitment that the kids had throughout the course of the year. And so you know we're starting to move right along. Heck, girls basketball practice, starts practice next week. Oh wow, uh, that's <laughs> so big. Monday. You know Monday I think is the first first technical week they can start day they can start practice. And so I heard Coach Crane running you know walking through the hallways yesterday in athletics going next week here we go yeah. y'all ready you girls ready and so it's like you know getting more girls involved some of them that don't you know necessarily play volleyball they'll start getting their opportunity and so the gym is about to start being used quite a bit you know yeah. in, in a lot of different ways and so um, you know we're gonna keep try keep trying to work on that football field for right now so keep going from there yep well good deal coach thank you for everything uh, it's um, a good time to be a goblin. It is it's for a sure. Good time to be a yep. real goblin. Turkey so. fest rolling. We can Ho- see if Ruby Begonia can. Hopefully, Mr. Kavanaugh will listen tonight from uh, North Carolina. It's a great day to be a. It goblin. is a great day to goblin. Of, yeah. So, so Ruby, so had. Ruby's going tomorrow, right? And, and correct me if I'm wrong. I, I know she went up and competed. Uh, you know, over there, Did, lost, lost. There. All right, so she's so gonna, we, we have some time to catch up. She, she, I think she, we lost by a minute and something up okay. there, if I'm not mistaken, All but. Right. I know it. She's probably like any other gobbler. She's been in the weight room working on That's her speed. Right. And stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. We're, uh, she going to get it this weekend. So, Well, thanks again, Coach, yep. and safe travels. Good luck. Go Gobblers.